and the one and only Denise Nisi Williams. In the building. Hi, uh, hey, listen, you know what? Can I call you Nisi? Yes, you can. I wore three chains today. Mm. I wore three chains today because you were coming. Normally it's just one, but today it's three. <laughs> today it's three. It's that special of occasion. First of all, BBC calls you one of the greatest soul singers of all time. Wow. It's pretty great. It is. It is great. Mm -hmm. um, I have a son that has autism. Okay. Okay. He only listens to your music, Queen. He listens to Phil Collins as well. Those are just some of you. He's seven years old. Okay. And he, right. Want to Be Free is his number one song. That's his number one so, song. So when he sees this, he's going to go crazy. <laughs> Did he and what's song? your baby's name? Uh, his name is Amari. Mark? Amari. 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 Hi, Amari. Oh, he's going to love this. Hi, Amari. He's Maybe I'll get this. a chance to meet you one day. You Absolutely. never know. So it's, um, you just came from the Oxnard Jazz Festival. Yes. It was a wonderful performance. Thank you. I was in attendance. Mm -hmm. I can vouch for that. It was great. I do have to say, um, you have like this octave four range mm -hmm. that people talk about. Where do you think that range came from? Because you have people like Mariah Carey. As an example, that has that type of octave, many Ripperton as well. Like, yes. where does that come from? Yes. I have to say, um, my mom. Your mother. You know, my mom uh, did not want to sing. You know, she was too shy. She didn't have the ham factor. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I would, okay. uh, my mom would be in the shower and she'd be singing and I would try to sing along with her. And then she'd do this little uh, skippy thing. <laughs> And I say, <laughs> and so most of what you hear is my mother. So you're mimicking your mother. That's I'm mimicking what came from. my mother. What was your mother listening to? She was listening to Nancy Wilson, Bobby Blue Bland. Mm. Uh, we had a, a, a record called the uh, Jackie Gleason Orchestra. Okay. Where they sang all the standards, but just oohs and ahs. Okay. And I was listening to Minnie Ripperton. You sure. know, one day. Uh, one of the girls from my neighborhood knocked on the door. She said, you have got to listen to this girl that sings with this group, Rotary Connection. Okay. You sound like her. Okay. And I said. And you didn't know yeah. who it was. I didn't know who it was. Okay. So I took the record, went in my mom, snug in my mom's room, <laughs> and played this record. And it was Minnie Ripperton. And okay. I said, oh, my God. God. Did you recognize you can sound like her at that young age? Was it like, hey, I sound like Minnie? I recognized that I could sing and hit the same kind of notes. Oh, I see. Um, okay. So that was really thrilling to me because I hadn't heard anybody singing like, like that, that before. Before. So I was really listening to many a lot. There was another artist called Ema Sumac, and she was singing up there. And then back in the day, Patti LaBelle was doing, you know, yes. that. Like, I loved her song, Down the Aisle, she said, <laughs> and I said, okay, I can do that you too. You can do that too, okay. So that's what really started me into listening to, you know, the high, the singers with the higher voice. But of course, yeah. I loved Aretha Franklin. Okay. You know, I, I loved the Supremes okay. and what they were doing. Sure. And, you know, just so many artists, Dakota Santos, you know, I was listening to her. Bobby right. Blue Bland. I was listening to all my mom's stuff. All you know? your mom's stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's where you get your roots from. Yes. Okay, uh, father figure. Was he a father figure in your life at the time? Uh, who was that? Your father. My dad. Um, he was in, in and out. He wasn't and out. around. But all he wasn't like musically inclined like your mother. My father had a beautiful voice. Really? But he wouldn't sing either. No, my father had a beautiful voice. So was he just like embarrassed to sing? It's just something he wasn't. They never felt comfortable singing in front of other people. Okay, I see. You uh -huh. know, and I started in the church choir when I was three years old. Yeah. You know? My aunt, my dad's sister heard me singing on the back porch one day and I said, we will now have a song from Denise. <laughs> and so I sang this song, um, There's a Man Waiting Way Beyond the Clouds. Yes. And after that song, she came out, she said, if I asked you to sing that in church on Sunday, would you sing it? I said, yeah, and I oh, did. Oh, you weren't even nervous? Uh, no. Okay. I did it, and that, that started the children's choir from there. So I started okay. singing at um, three years old okay. in That's church. Now, you have so many stories, and I know we're going to be limited on time, but 
Is there a story with an artist that you haven't told before? Something for our audience, like maybe a writing session with like Stevie Wonder, perhaps. Because on stage you gave a, a wonderful story about you know how being discovered and you wanted uh, the, uh, uh, from Phillip. Earth, Wind, and Fire, Philip, yeah, to, to sing, sing your song. song. Yeah. But they wanted you to sing your song. Yeah. Do you have like a story with that? Um, of how that happened yes. particularly? Well, um, I was uh, with Wonder Love, okay. and Stevie used to let Wonder Love come out and do one song before he came out. Okay. So that night, the band said, well, let's do Denise's song. And I said, okay. So I went out, and I did our version of Free. And, but what we didn't know was on the front row was Maurice White, Philip Bailey, and Verdine White. Oh, you didn't know they were there? I didn't know they were there. So okay, I that's sang a surprise. My song. Okay. It, yeah, I sang my song. And so afterwards, their manager came back. He said, hey, Philip and Maurice and, and uh, Verdine loved your song. Whose song is that? I said, it's mine. I wrote it with a couple of the band members. Yeah. And they said, uh, they said, oh, we love the song. I said, can I send it to you? I said, I got about seven, or six, <laughs> other, seven other songs. I can send you my tape. And they said, okay. So I sent it to them. Didn't hear anything for eight months. You That's know, a long time. Long too. time. And I'm like, they didn't like did you think? Song. Did you think because it was so long, they just forgot about it? They didn't get to it at that time? Or you forgot about it? I didn't no, I didn't forget about it, but okay. I didn't think my thought was that they they didn't forget about it that they didn't like it. They didn't like it. They didn't okay. like the songs. So then 8 months later I get a call and I go up to Maurice White's office and we're in there and you know everybody's being cordial and nice and so Maurice said, "We loved your songs." I said, Oh, God. I said, thank you. I've been telling all my friends that you guys are going to record my music because Philip Bailey and I have the same vocal range. So, yeah. You know, he's yeah, going to sure. sing my song. They said, sure. no. I said, no. They said, no. <laughs> Maurice said, I just signed a girls group to the label, my production company, The Emotions, okay. and I'm looking for a female solo artist, and I want it to be you. And I okay. said... Philip Bailey's not going to do my song. <laughs> so it was a little bit of disappointment because you wanted... Did you feel like as a songwriter it, it was easy for them to do your song? You didn't believe in yourself at that time? Or why did you want Philip to do the song instead of yourself? Because you have an amazing voice. Well, because I came into uh, Wonder Love with two children already. I had already been married. I okay. married my high school sweetheart. We had two children. Okay. And I didn't want to travel and leave my, you know, leave my children. So it's like, I don't want to go on the road. Okay. You know, I just want to be a songwriter and a music publisher. I'd gotten into publishing. I said, I just want to be a songwriter and a music publisher. I, I don't want to travel because of my kids. And when I called my mom, and who lived in Indiana, because we're from Gary, Indiana. Michael Jackson. And I told her, no, Denise Williams. And so I thought... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. I love that one up. She trumped me. No, Denise, we, I love that. It's absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, <laughs> I told my mom, and I was like, oh, you know, close to tears. And mom said, don't worry about it. I'm coming to California to take care of the boys. Wow. And so my mom moves from Indiana to California, and that's how I was able to, to tour. You know, your mom's support to come and have you fulfill your dreams. Yeah, because you just can't turn your babies over to anybody. You're right, exactly. So my mom came out from Indiana and she took care of uh, my older two sons. That's son number three over son there. Son number three, four is over there. Yeah. Now, how difficult was it, because obviously she came to help you to make that decision, I'm going to go on the road and then leave your babies. How difficult was it for you to focus on your music and still have your heart with your children? Well... It was difficult because I was out on the road uh, doing the Colors of Christmas. I think it was Peebo Bryson, Stephanie Mills, wow. um, James Ingram, and maybe Jeffrey Osborne. And so, um, and so, about it was the, it was for five weeks. And so, around two and a half weeks. I started getting really sad and really? my continence was down. Yeah. And the producer said, what's wrong with you? What's it? I said, I miss my children. <laughs> and so he said, okay, come on, come on. He gave me a big hug. Okay. That weekend, 
my mother and my two children showed up. He said oh, for them really? to come. Yeah, because he said, we don't let her see them kids. <laughs> She's not going to make it. And so uh, he sent for um, my kids to uh, my kids to come out. And that's, that's sweet. Yeah, that's he, very did. Sweet. he did. He did. That's amazing. Then it was Forrest and Logan that came out with Grams to Florida. <clears throat> now, do, does does Forrest remember any of this? I know he doesn't have a mic on, but from your, your conversation with him, does he remember these times at I all? I think he does. Yeah, I think he does. He I does. think okay. he remembers it. Okay, all right. So, as an artist with a strong name like yourself, what artist did you admire that you listen to that's like, I really love that artist? Like a Marvin Gaye, like. A well, I love Marvin Gaye. Of course, I okay. did. I did. I oh, one, one night I took my mother to a concert with me because Marvin Gaye's brother was singing at this place, and I wanted to hear his brother. So I took my mom, and uh, so Marvin we was, Gaye's brother was is, was singing that I night. I didn't Not even Marvin, know his brother. His, okay. his brother. Okay. So we went up. We went to that seat. Man, about twenty minutes in. Marvin came up and sat next to us. Okay. And my mother, she jumped over me like she was <laughs> Jackie Joyner or something. She said, oh, Marvin, Destin, love her. Oh, I love you so much. I, I'm pulling on her. Oh, Calm Marvin. down, Mama. And, and, and he was so nice to her. He yeah. loved her and she let, he just let her talk. I scoot over so she could sit next to him. Then I said, Mom, come on. Come on, show about the star. Wow. He was so nice to my mom because wow. she just, oh, mommy, <laughs> just the lover. I said, oh, Lord hey, Jesus. It was, a, it was a big record. Oh, my, oh, Lord Jesus. So, but he was very, very nice. I loved his music. He yeah. was probably one of the most creative writers, vocalists of our time. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about Marvin Gaye. He has this crooner album where he's mm. kind of sounding like you know, some of the, um, who, who's like a crooner, like, it's a, a, a white guy, it's, I can't remember, mm. I can't remember. And he did an album He like did an that. album like that, yes, he did an album like that. I'll try to get it off air to get it to you, but it was interesting because it was like his lost songs. Oh. And there was a documentary on him where he was trying to find that his record. style and his voice of where he was, because oh, okay. he, he wanted to be a dancer, but they say he had two left feet and he couldn't dance. Well, right? you need more than two left. Exactly. So, you know, for Marvin is really one of my favorite artists of all time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, just a passion in his too. voice. Yeah. You know? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but he found his voice. He found his soul in this music. Okay. And there, I don't care. There will never be another Marvin Gaye. No. There will never be a Marvin Gaye. But I loved him, and I loved Nancy Wilson. I wanted Nancy to Wilson. look like her. I wanted to sound like her. I wanted to dress like Nancy. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy on the radio in Chicago, and when he would introduce one of her songs, he would call her the baby. <laughs> and I said, someday I, I want one of them to call me the, ba the, the baby. baby. <laughs> yep, and Nancy. Oh, and what was lovely about it, is when my first project came out, I used to say how I was a big fan of hers. Mm -hmm. And so she invited me to her home for dinner. Really? And, you know, my managers were men. You know, I was around Earth, Wind, and Fire. I was around a lot of men groups and the Loving Spoonful. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what to do with a girl, really. Okay. And so uh, Nancy taught me about makeup and hair so and became dressing. Close. Became very yeah, close. she was absolutely wonderful to me uh -huh. and I loved her voice and her expression and how she you know delivered herself yeah did y'all like yeah. sing together we never sung together I wish. not even like in your own alone time just you got hanging out just singing it's never you know I was so enamored with her mm -hmm. until I just would sit and listen and take all of that information in. I see. You know, I see. I wasn't trying to sing. I was trying to learn. You're trying to learn. I see. I see. You really respected her. Yes. Oh my gosh. Beyond. It, is there is there a, a least favorite song that you sing that you just know the crowd loves it, but you're just not such a song. The, my least favorite song, and it turned out to be a big hit. <laughs> right, I want to know. I want to know uh, what is that song. It's called I Got the Next Dance with You. It was a huge <laughs> disco hit. So I had just left London during a command performance for The Prince. 
Wow. It's Prince Charles with Johnny and I, we went and did a command performance over there. Okay. And so the next, um, I come home in about three days, I'm doing a television show. Okay. So I'm in there and I got to sing this song. Okay, I'm singing this song because it's like number one in the clubs. <laughs> you got to do I it. I got to do it. <laughs> so then I hear the announcer say, next segment, we're going to be hearing songs from the three top Disco Queen. Oh. Grace Jones, Vicki Sue Robinson, and Denise Williams. I oh, said Disco wow. Queen. Yes. I was just with the Prince. How'd I get over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be labeled a disco that that's um Oh my god. Yeah, that's not what you want to be labeled as. I no. said Disco Queen. Oh God, but it was number one in the club, so I'm bouncing around to all these clubs at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> singing, I got the next dance with you. Okay. Now, what is your favorite song to sing? That's hard to say because I really love just about everything that I've done. Okay. Some more than others, but, you know, when I think of Free and Black Butterfly, Cause mm -hmm. You Love Me Baby, It's Gonna Take a Miracle, Silly, you know, uh, Let's Hear It for the Let's Hear It for the Boy. For the boy. You know, when I think of all of those, it's your conscious, you know, when mm -hmm. I think of all of the songs I've done, there's very few songs that I did, I'm So Proud, yeah. you know, by Curtis Mayfield. Mm -hmm. There's very few songs that I have sang that mm -hmm. I didn't like. That you didn't like. No. Is there a unique story to one song in particular? Like maybe, like Free, maybe there was something happening in your life and it just kind of came out of you to write that specific song? Is there like a storyline with any of your songs? Well, of course, Silly, and I told that tonight. You know, I was dating this guy, big time club owner. Okay. And he seemed like such a nice guy, and he turned out not to be turn, okay. such a nice guy, but I was crazy about him. Okay. So I'm sitting in St. Thomas, because I was doing the show with Sinbad, <laughs> and Eric Benet and I, in fact, we were doing Eric Benet. Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and uh, we broke up while I was there. <laughs> And so you're just sitting there writing it? Just write, put it down and I get back home, we're going to write it. And so I put it on, you know, one of my projects and the record label called me, said there are no singles on this um, project. Mm -hmm. I said, tough titty, go find <laughs> one. <laughs> Go find Go one. Go find one, exactly. Okay. And so this DJ in, D in uh, Detroit okay. was listening to my project and he heard Silly and he started playing that song. So Frankie Crocker at WVON in New York wasn't playing a lot of my music because he said I was too pop. I wasn't really? soul enough. <clears throat> So then I get a call one day, Mr. Frankie Crocker want to talk to you. I said, oh, oh fine. Oh, the, from the radio? From the radio. Okay. He said, I tell you, I'm so sick of these women calling me. I get 30, 35 calls a day for this song, Silly. <laughs> I said, well, that means you're going to play it, yeah, right? Because yeah. you're getting 30 some of my requests. I think you'd be foolish not to play my song. <clears throat> right. He played it. And then I went on the radio with him and we had an interview. But, you know, he's saying I was too um, pop. And that was actually a big problem for Columbia Records mm -hmm. because the R&B department would say, well, she's selling pop, so we need some of your money to promote her. And they say, no, but she's a black artist, mm -hmm. and we're saving it. And they said, you better give up that money. So I went to Watney Yeftikoff, the president. I said, listen, I am not a pop singer, and I am not a strong R&B singer. I said, but I'm selling on both sides. Give up that money. And he called them, and he ringed them, and they gave, me the mon they gave them the money. To promote me. And I was going to ask you that, like, what is the most difficult part about being as high as you are in the music industry? Because there's so many people that want to pull from you and take from you. Mm. What's, what's the hardest part about the industry? We had a little bit of that today for us. What's the possible? <laughs> <laughs> okay. People were, called, were coming up to me and, hey, I want you to talk to my brother. And, uh, and, and put yes, me on the phone. Yes, and, yes. and, hey, I want you to talk to my mother. Hey, we from Gary, Indiana, too. <laughs> you got to talk. Oh, I have people shoving phone 
in my face of, All the time. of their relatives and people I don't know. Yeah. But you know, I find it hard. Forrest gets upset with me. I find it hard to say no. I said, okay. So I talked to mom. You know, I talked to the brothers. Sure. I talked to people. I had one guy was on the Dave Cost cruise yeah. and he just said, hey, I got my mom on the phone and she loves you. And so uh, my band members were saying, man, we can't do that. You know, you can't come in this section. And no, she just loved you. He was from St. Louis. And she listened all you. And so I got up and I walked over. I oh, said, my goodness. let me say hi to mom. So I talked to mom and said, thank you so much for being a fan. And your son is such a fan. And I love you. Are you OK? You well? And, you know, she told me she was not doing pretty well. I said, well, I'm glad we got a chance to be. So, you know, of course, was fussing at me because I talked to three people. I I talked to a mama, I talked to a brother, and I talked to some other people. That's too many people. I talk, but and you know, I, I, he, he can do that, but I don't have the heart to not do it. Right, right, right. I and mean, that has to be tough because it's like you're a fishbowl. And, you know, everybody wants to see you and walk up to you and talk to you yeah. all the time. Yeah. Is, it, is this something that you just don't get used to? Like, I've gotten used to it. It's okay. been so many years. I'm almost doing this 50 years. Right, I, right. If I'm not used to it by now, I'm in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's, it, yeah, it's been a while. So um, that's interesting because I always picture like people like for just veering off to sports, like a LeBron James or a Michael Jordan. I've seen a documentary on them, and he's basically saying like it's like a nightmare mm -hmm. being me sitting in my shoes for just one day, you know, and my best time was when I'm alone. Mm -hmm. So for you, when you're alone, for the people that are fans that would watch this, what do you like to do when you're alone? Like, are you like a Netflix person? What are you watching on? Do you watch TV? Are you reading books? What do you do on your free time? I, I love watching television. I'm a binge watcher. Okay. But also, I'm with three of my 12 grandchildren okay. three days a week. So. Okay. You know, dealing with them okay. and and ha hanging out with them, they keep me young. You they know, keep, yes, yes, they keep me young. So I'm hanging out with family a lot. I've got a book that I've been writing for over a year. I got to get back into that. Okay, called Bringing Out the Queen in You. Love that title. And it's um it's about Queen Esther and the year of the beauty regime that she went through before she went before the king. Ah, I so see. it talks about makeup and hair and nails and and massages sure. and this, you know all all the beauty things that um, we ladies need to do right, right. to bring out the queen in us. Well, what and what are you binge watching? Because you said binge watch. What are you? Because <laughs> I might be watching it too. I, I want to know. Well, right now I'm binge watching only murders in the building. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I've been binge watching, starting from the Frank, a burn notice. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's, a, that's another one. I okay. have some crazy sports. What else has we been binge watching? Is that on Netflix? No, Hulu. Hulu, okay. You're Both Hulu. of them are Hulu. Only Murders, man. Only. It's one of our favorite movies in the house is Three Amigos. Three Amigos. Three, oh, with I Steve, must have with, watched. With Steve Martin? Yeah. Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Uh, Steve Martin. Steve Martin Short. Martin Short. Martin Short. See, and, and Chevy Chase. Is it on Hulu? Uh, no, you, it's on, on Netflix. Uh, oh, because, man, Netflix that movie, a, I don't know. Oh, how, my God. I love that movie, Three Amigos. He been it's hilarious. They need to come back and make a Three Amigos. Yeah, they need too. to come back and redo that. That is a great. That's a that's great movie. That's one of our favorite movies. If you haven't three seen it, you have to watch Three Amigos. Three Amigos, especially when he's trying to do that walk and he gets pulled back. Oh my God, that movie oh, is nothing. hilarious. When Chevy Chase shoots the <laughs> the invisible, <laughs> invisible. <laughs> the invisible, he shoots him. That is crazy. So for the people watching, that's what. Nisi's watching on TV right, right now. now. She's that's a what I'm and taking care of the grandchildren. Good. Yeah, taking care so of my kids. Do the grandchildren know who Nisi Denise Williams is? I think they do. Yeah, okay. they do. They, they say do. that's Grammy on stage. Is mm -hmm. that what it is? Okay, that's exciting. Yep. And my nephew Brooklyn is out touring with Drake right now. Really? He plays. Um, I guess Drake does um, part in his uh, concert where he goes back into, uh, does a scene where he was a teenager. Wait a second. Wait a second. That's your nephew? That's my nephew, Brooklyn. Wow. And he grew up, watch he grew up watching me. So I asked him. That's, like, that's incredible. Does, does Drake know this as well? 
I don't the know. relationship? I'm, I'm pretty sure he knows by now that that's my nephew. That's interesting. I, I would love for Drake uh, to do something, you know, remix a Denise Williams record. That'd be oh, cool. That would be something. That would be yeah, crazy. Yeah, so. Because everyone thought it was a hologram. It was like my, my, viral. Like it was a hologram of whatever. And, and no, they were trying to figure out who it was. That's That's, that's my nephew, Brooklyn. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. That's incredible. Brooklyn well, I mean, um, I have so many questions. I don't want to take up all of your time. But I, I do want to ask this. Um, what is one artist that you wish you worked with that you just, it slipped through your fingers, you never got the opportunity or it just never happened? The one artist that I wished I sang with, there's actually two. One is Michael McDonald. Oh, wow. I Michael would McDonald's love to amazing. have done something with Michael McDonald. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, the other artist I wanted to sing with, I actually did sing with him, was Ray Charles. Ray Charles. What was that like? Uh, it was just incredible. There was a whole, uh, there were five artists on the show with Ray Charles. Okay. And um, so at the end, they were doing Oh Beautiful, you know, his song Of course, America. Yeah, yeah. So they wanted to do it as an encore. But Ray Charles said, the only person I will sing with is that little girl, Denise wow. Williams. That's incredible. He said, the only person I will sing with is incredible. Denise Williams. Wow. And so I went out and I did it. I was the only one. I felt so bad. I looked at the other artists. I said, <laughs> I, that, I said it, it, was, it wasn't my idea. It wasn't my idea, yeah. yeah but yeah. I went out and I sang with Ray Charles. Uh, the only other artist I would love to have sang with okay. would have been Sarah Vaughn. Wow. Sarah Vaughn. Sarah Vaughn. Why Sarah Vaughn? I love Sarah Bar Vaughn and Ella Fitzgerald, their clarity, mm -hmm. their execution. Oh, my gosh. I saw Ella Fitzgerald at the Grammys one year. And I mean, I acted like a linebacker. I must have jumped <laughs> over six, seven people to get to Ella. I said, oh, Miss oh, Miss Fitzgerald, I said, I love you so much. I love you so much. I've grown up listening to you. Yeah. You know, my mom used to listen to you a lot. And I said, I just love you, and I'm so grateful to meet you. She said, sweetheart, I can tell by your voice. You have a beautiful voice. Sweet. You just keep singing. You keep singing. And I said, OK, thank you. And I sh we shook hands. And I'm so sad that we didn't get a picture, you know, oh, at that time. We yeah. did not get a picture together, she and I. The other person was Sarah Vaughn. So I had a girlfriend in New York. Her dad owned one of the biggest copying services in New York. Okay. And so one day he said, Denise, come over here. I was visiting with Sephora. He said, come over here and sing this, um, sing this sheet for me. And I saw at the top Sarah Vaughn. I said, I can't sing that Sarah Vaughn song. He said, you can sing it. Come on. I need to make sure it's good. So I sang it. <clears throat> yeah. And so that was it. And then about six, seven years later, uh, his daughter, Sephora, said, girl, I'm coming out to California and I'm going to have um, dinner at Sarah Vaughn's house. <laughs> I said, not without me. <laughs> you, you're not having dinner with her without yeah. me. Yeah. So she invited me and mm -hmm. my mom to come and eat with Sephora and her mom over to her house. Okay. And I'm telling you, I could, I could barely speak. Do you remember what you ate? I, greens and chicken and cornbread Let's go. and mac and cheese. <laughs> Let's do it right. Okay. Oh, she burnt. I mean, okay. she cooked. And I understand yeah. that her barbecue, she, she used to cook on the road. She had a little hot plate, <laughs> cooked for the band and stuff. Yeah. And so I tell you, I went over there and I, and I just sat at her, I sat at her feet. And just as I was about to ask a question, oh, I don't know if I should tell this Let's part do it. or not. Let's do it. Just as I was about to ask her a question, Natalie came on as Natalie was singing and Natalie was scatting. She said, that girl can't scat. And I said, I'm not asking her nothing. Wow. I'm not saying nothing. I'm going to be <laughs> quiet and eat my greens. <laughs> <laughs> and my fried chicken. And my fried chicken. <laughs> I love Natalie too. I miss Natalie. I miss mm -hmm. Donna. We, yeah. Those were friends of mine. Yeah. yeah. So much respect and love. Went, they went too early, I feel. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I have to say, I, I feel very honored and privileged to sit in front of you. Oh, um, thank you. I definitely didn't want to put a camera in your face like these other crazy weirdos out here. <laughs> But I wanted to do it the right way, and um, you did. it's been—I uh, feel lovely. like just been blessed uh, to have you on the show with me. And um, Thank you. ladies and gentlemen, Denise Nisi Williams. Yeah, we this has out. been lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You've been lovely.